I'm Daria. I work at the Idea Lab, Denver Public Library's makerspace. Welcome to Learn, Make, Share, our weekly video series where we show you a new skill or activity to try at home. This one is about learning how to use Photopea, a free web-based graphic editor. What does that mean? Well, it's a website that looks like and has many of the same tools that Photoshop offers. And since it is a website and not a program, you don't need to install anything. You don't even need an account, just the internet connection and some photos you're looking to fix. Personally, I love using Photopea because of how accessible it is, no cost, no installation, but also because it handles very much like Photoshop. Everything you learn from this video, you will be able to utilize in Photoshop. We'll start with the basics, the interface, or in other words, what Photopea looks like, what the different areas of the screen are, and where all the commands live. And then in part two, we'll learn and practice some common things that people usually want to know when it comes to editing their pics, like correcting the photos that are too dark or too light, adjusting the colors, and fixing skin blemishes. But before we get started, here's a couple of things to take note of. First, Photopea works best on the computer rather than a phone or a tablet. The website is still available, but it was really built for a desk or a laptop computer, so using it on a mobile device is difficult. I do know how to use lots of cool photo editing apps, so leave me a comment if you would like a video that covers that. Next, we all learn at our own pace, right? I know when I follow online tutorials, it feels like I pause them every 10 seconds and switch back and forth. So please feel free to pause the video when you need to and replay any of the parts you want to revisit. In case you didn't already know this, you can just press the space bar on your keyboard to pause a YouTube video. Thirdly, I encourage you as much as you can to work on the photos that you have wanted to or been meaning to fix. That way, you'll walk away doubly accomplished. But if you don't have any handy right now and you just want to start learning, I got you. In the description, there is a link to a pack of practice photos that I put together just for this, along with a handout that summarizes the key points of this video. So make sure you download that before you get started. To follow along with this video, you need first, an internet connection. Remember, Photopea is a website so you can only use it if you're connected to the web. This does also mean that it will not automatically save your work, so if the page crashes, your progress may be lost. But more on that in just a moment. Second, a desk or a laptop computer. And lastly, the touchpad on your laptop is okay, but I recommend that you use a mouse. So let's finally meet Photopea. Open up your favorite internet browser and in the address bar, type in photopea.com and there she is. Here is what Photoshop interface looks like these days. And the two are almost identical. It's pretty neat, right? Now, before I tell you what all the buttons and levers do, let's talk for just a moment about what makes graphic editors like these unique what works so well in them, and basically what all the hype is about. The thing that really makes them stand out is called non-destructive editing, or in other words, layers. And it really is kind of what it sounds like. It means that you can build your image up in layers, kind of like those clear acetate sheets in those overhead projectors you might have had in school. You can have an image at the bottom of the stack, and the layers with your modifications on top. And just like those clear acetate sheets, they can be pulled out, they can be put in a different order, they can be drawn on top of. Now I'm going to quickly show you how this works in Photopea on this little drawing that I made. Let's say I've been working on this for a little while and I've been drawing everything on the same layer. Sometime later, I decided to change how the veins look on this leaf. Working on the same layer means that I have to paint them over and then draw them again just how I want them. But if the different elements of my drawing were on separate layers, I can go directly to that layer and change what I want without disrupting the rest of the image. This has so many benefits. It saves time, as you just saw, 
it gives you the chance to experiment with different looks quickly, and it is helpful if you're making an edit for someone else, say a friend or a client, and are getting feedback during the process. So if the layers are like an overhead projector, what is all this other stuff? In a nutshell, if you imagine Photopea interface as your desk's work surface, this large area in the middle of the screen would be your sheet of paper or canvas. That's where you see the image that you're working on. Your tools and brushes and such would be lined up on the left. Your trusty overhead projector here at the bottom right, with these panels in the top right being kind of like stacks of reference or guidebooks. And that's as hard as it gets. Now, let's look at all these separate areas a bit closer. First, the document window. When you open an existing image or start a new file from scratch, the document window will display its name in the top left. If you have more than one file to open at the same time, say, if you're copying a section of one picture and putting it into another, you will have tabs, and they will go in the order that you open them in. To switch between them, just click on the name of the file at the top. Now, the toolbar. This area contains all the tools that you will be using directly with the mouse, so your equivalents of paintbrushes, scissors, sponges, etc. They are organized in a couple of different ways. First, they live in groups, based on what they do. This grouping on top are selection tools. In the middle are the painting tools. Underneath, you will find drawing and type tools. And the bottom section is home to navigation tools. Selection tools give you a ton of different ways to select just the part of the picture you want to work on, if that's what your project requires. Painting tools are more than just paintbrushes. They hold powerful retouching options from correcting lighting in small, specified areas to erasing unwanted objects. Later, we will look at one of them more closely. Drawing and type tools would be where you add text and work with vector graphics. But that is a story for another day. Navigation tools let you zoom around the picture. Sometimes you need to come in real close or scroll to a different part of it altogether. Use the magnifying glass icon to zoom in and out and the hand icon to grab and move to a different part. The tools are also organized in stacks when two or more similar tools live under the same icon to save space. Notice how some of them have a tiny arrow in the bottom right corner? This means that there are more tools hidden within the stacks that will be revealed when you click and hold with a mouse. Your cursor, or mouse pointer, changes depending on which tool you selected. For example, a brush pointer will look like a circle and crop like crosshairs. You know how when you're working on a text document in Microsoft Word or on the internet, pressing Ctrl and C at the same time copies the text that's selected and Ctrl V puts it where the cursor is blinking? This kind of thing with different keys works for many, many operations you will commonly use in Photopea. The majority of all tools and commands, no exaggeration, have a keyboard shortcut associated with it. They are pretty easy to memorize because they use the keys with the same first letter as the name of the tool or command. For instance, B for brush or E for eraser. I included a good beginner list of them in the handout. But Photopea also has built-in guide that you can refer to anytime. Under the More menu in top middle, choose Keyboard Shortcuts. Using these is an excellent habit to build. And while right now I want you to concentrate on just getting used to how everything works, I urge you to start using keyboard shortcuts when you get comfortable with Photopea, practicing on your own time. Options bar is next. This bar is directly linked to the toolbar, or more specifically, to each tool individually. It will look differently for every tool you have selected, since it gives you more options and fine controls for that very tool. For example, I'm going to select the brush here in the toolbar, and the options bar changes to reflect the different options for it. Now I can change the shape and the size of the brush, how soft or hard the edges are, 
how transparent the brush strokes will appear, and so on. Now, the menu bar. This looks similar to pretty much any program I've ever used, especially on PC. The different drop-down menus here hold commands, as opposed to tools. Remember how earlier I mentioned that tools are something that you will use manually with a mouse, like painting the exact area of a picture that you want? Well, commands, on the other hand, are more like processes that affect the whole picture or just the parts of it, if that is what you choose using the selection tools. Think of them more along the lines of filters. We're going to touch some of these in a bit, so you'll see the difference between tools and commands. Oftentimes, editing requires coming back to the same group of tools repeatedly, and the people who developed Photopea organize such commonly used elements into panels. Photoshop has panels just like that, and even more. Different panels are just combinations of tools and commands having to do with the same task. Using the example of the brush from earlier, let's see what the brush panel holds. Some of the same stuff here from the options bar, like the shape and the size, but now there are also controls for the angle at which the brush will paint, how far the individual strokes will be from each other, and many other controls for tones, movement, and the amount of strokes. Instead of navigating between options and menu bars, you can now set your brush in one place. So right now, don't bog yourself down with all this. Just remember that as you explore photo editing and manipulation more, the more precise controls that will give you cooler effects will live here in the panels. The brush panel was just one example. A full list of them is under Window in the menu bar, including Text, Color Picker, and many others. And the most important one of them, you already know, it's Layers. One last note here would be that, unlike a program that is installed on your computer, Photopea being a website does not save your work as you go along. And it is a known fact that the internet is not the most stable force in the universe. Occasionally, pages freeze and crash, and in that case, your work may be lost. This is not inherently a bad thing, just a con to weigh against the pros of how accessible and easy to use Photopea is. Get into the habit of periodically saving the work by going to File and then Save as PSD. This will download a project file directly to your computer and it will be in Photoshop format .psd. So you will need Photopea or Photoshop to open and edit it. The difference between doing this and saving it as a JPEG would be that PSD saves all your layers and JPEG basically flattens it, creating one solid image where everything is on the same layer. Each next version you save will have numbers attached to the end of its name, one, two, and so on. Once you are completely done editing something, save it one last time, and now all the previous versions can be erased. And just like that, you now know Photopea interface, what the different areas of the screen are responsible for. Nice work sticking it out this far. Now let's go to part two to learn and practice some photo editing. See you there.